God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. I'm Reverend Dr. K.E. Holmes. You, you're a child of excellence and you're tuned in to the Hour of Deliverance. And, uh, ah, oh, bless God, bless God. I am so happy today and so worn and torn as well for what's going on in our country and around the world. However, I want to deal with we, the body of Christ, and our the the us and they type of thing, and the the me and the my. I um. I I watch me a lot in terms of my P's and Q's. It's one of the things that I came to understand early in my Christian life, and then in a whole other way early in ministry. And God taught me this one, by the way, that the thing that you notice in other people, it's you. You notice you at some point in time in your life. The thing that kept you are who catches your attention. And um, I got to know and understand that from the Lord. I don't want to give, stop and give the testimony on that. But I got to know and understand that from the Lord so that when I realize that what catches my attention are errors and mistakes in things that there doesn't have to be an error and mistake. And because God had already taught me, uh, got my mask, because God had already taught me that the thing that catches your attention, the thing that you minister to, or the thing that makes you most happy and the thing that upsets you. Now, he was telling about earth things. It's you. Now, when he began to teach me that, it wasn't about being full of, full of yourself and that type of thing. He had taught me about that too. But he was showing me that when I look at today's title is us, uh, us and them. Over. Or me and <laughs> oh, you know what? I changed the title just before we started and decided to go grateful. And what I'm telling you, exactly the reason why. Because I learned that with the us and the me and the them and the they, there's mostly criticism. And I realized that if I go with that, then I'm just criticizing. And even if I mean well, I'm still criticizing. And God doesn't do that. Just look at the faith chapter. God doesn't do that. Everything that you can read in the faith chapter, uh, Hebrews 11, when you read the, the story, the full blown out story, a whole lot of stuff happened. But what God counts is faith. And I realized that if I go with the us and them that I was going to, I'd be disgruntled and I'd be upset. And I have a whole course on Go Grateful. God's taught me some things about being grateful. And I knew that I don't, I don't want to leave here. I don't want to minister to you. And I don't want to minister to my spirit and my soul. Criticism. And what's wrong with everything. And there's a lot wrong. I mean, you could spend your whole lifetime on what's wrong. And you'd be so unhappy. And that's not God's will. We're supposed to have joy and peace being full of the Holy Ghost. So I went with Go Grateful. And I have this, this course on Go Grateful. And I, of course, I can't give you the whole course in an hour. It's a 10-week course, uh, an hour for each. But I also give the videos uh, or pictures to people when they're going through rough stuff. As a matter of fact, I, I saw my son, Ian Holmes, if you don't know it, put uh, he put up, I don't know if it was Instagram or Facebook, but go to it. He put up a song that he wrote years ago for someone who'd gotten bad news from the doctor. This is way before all the stuff we're going through right now. However, because of what we're going through right now, we don't remember that there was a period years ago where every every thing that you heard about somebody going to the doctor they had cancer, someone had cancer, this one had this kind of cancer, that one had that kind of cancer. And back then, by the way, God taught me that uh, 
of Mary Hart doeth good like a medicine. And he was showing me how medicine is his word. We're so used to, especially me, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I know how to walk that, love to walk that. How I learned how to walk that wasn't fun. I, I learned it sick. I first learned it watching uh, the Pentecostal church, Pentecostal type church that after the Lord saved me, I walked in. But going grateful? Oh my. I'm going to, I can't show them to you because I didn't have this in mind in the beginning. But in, in the Bible, God spells grateful. G -R, well, I shouldn't say God spells. God gave it before there was English, okay? You got to know that when you read the word. And, and the old English that even of our newest Bibles, the English uh, vernacular that we say, say, and you know, I'm always talking to you about the Lord Jesus said to say some things. Because saying, God created, faith chapter. Through faith we understand that the worlds were created through the word of God. God said, God said, God said. You want to go back to Genesis and just see how many times God said. But the thing about grateful, and I share this with you. Grateful causes a tsunami of favor. Grateful in the word of God is different from the way we Western thinkers, English-speaking people, and even European, European thinkers and European languages make grateful. Grateful in the Word of God has to do with gratitude in the sense of, ah, here's an experiment. I usually like to do it with people right in front of me so that I can see it. But right now, just think of something, an incident or a person that you were just so grateful for. Take, take a few seconds and think. And I mean just a few seconds. And even I, just now doing it, and I didn't even get to the thought. If you noticed, you inhaled. Grateful takes you into a place that has to do with breath. Specifically, the breath of God. You, you remember in Genesis, it was God who breathed into man and he became a living soul. Grateful moves you into a place of life. It's not just the Western idea of acknowledgement and, and thank you type of thing. Great, whoop, now that startled me. <laughs> Mowing the lawn and the, the uh, something hit the window. Startled me. Which is a good example about grateful, because gratitude makes it so that when you move in a place of gratitude and a place of gratefulness, it makes it so that the things of life can happen, like that thing, that, that stone or whatever that hit the glass and made that sound startled me. There are startling things that happen in the earth, but when you go grateful, when you are grateful, you move in life. Remember the thing that you thought about? You inhaled. And that also is to show you the direction of the breath. Because when you inhale, you also have to exhale. But when you start out inhaling, you are receiving the breath of life. God breathed into man. So man had to inhale that breath. Gratitude makes us move in life. Again, why I, I didn't want to go with the, thus, the, the they and the them title. Because it makes me disgruntled. It makes me upset about the things. that They're wrong. They're wrong. It's, it's, and, but you can see that it's upsetting. Grateful? Grateful? I've shared with you before how Psalm 107, grateful, will get you through stuff that took too long, was too strong when it started, was out of place and out of time, shouldn't have been happening. Grateful will get you through. Now, that's different from, but along with, how fear has torment. Things that make you afraid torment you. And God lets you know that perfect love casts out fear. Grateful, an attitude of gratitude, 
moves you in this place of life so that the things that you didn't anticipate or you planned for it over here but it came from over there or you planned for it as best you could but it was worse than than what you could even if you knew check out second chronicles i love 2020 vision i when i teach 2020 vision it comes from second chronicles chapter 20 verse 20 but check out chap, uh, chronic second chronicles chapter 20 it's a very long verse and it is full of overwhelm overwhelm is a fact of living in this earth overwhelm and that's part of because god's the one who made heaven and earth but he gave us to deal in earth and heaven from from this perspective to his perspective however he being from heaven to earth things are bigger than big grander than than can be explained because it's god when when you get to ex understand anything about god then you understand it's infinitely more than that and even the word infinite has a definition to it and god can't be put in that box even though he'll fit that box very well if what you know about god is he is good yes he is he's good that's not all he is but yes he's good and then if what you know about god is that he's faithful yes he is he's faithful he fits that box but that's not all he is Gratitude is like that in the Bible, the way God uses the word gratitude. But he, he gives us language. I noticed today that I'm saying but. And do you know that there's no such word but in Hebrew? And it's barely there in the Greek. And I noticed I'm using it today because I'm talking from the standpoint of the language and the English that we use. Now I'm going to speak a little louder because I can hear the guy mowing the lawn. Grateful makes it so that the things of life, whether it's the normal things, they're not upsetting. It makes it so that they don't throw you off. It makes it so that you don't throw in the towel or you don't do something other than what you should do. And even like he's stopping it. Grateful will make it so that when somebody, something is happening with them in a way that it's inconvenient to you, grateful makes it so that you find a solution. You, you're not mad at the them and the they and the what's wrong and how it disturbs you. I heard somebody praying the other day for our officials and everything that they prayed was because it's inconvenient for me and my family because it's, it doesn't help me and because of what I have to do. And I'm talking about people who are called to do things. Called to do things. So that what you have to do is what's supposed to get done. Yes, God wants you to get it done. But the prayer for the official was according to praying so that they could make it so they could get done. Well, guess what? Go grateful. And I did share that with you last week from, from Timothy. 2 Timothy. Uh, chapter first Timothy I think it is chapter 2 where to pray we love to quote that scripture pray for all those in authority and I I realized that as the person was praying I'm in second Timothy it's, a, it's in first Timothy as we're praying we want to realize that gratitude, watch what gratitude does. Now, there's a whole lot in this scripture. God was dealing with me so much about it. I, uh, there, therefore, I exhort thee, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be, be made uh, for all men. Did you see that? He said giving of thanks. Most of us, when we pray, you, I say this a lot. We yakety, 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 yak. Okay. I'm not even on that because God was showing me some things here. And the, the, the supplications, the prayers, the intercessions, all of that is what we normally learn as part of prayer. And even when you study, you're going to find. And yet God is separating this thing out and makes it all plural. I shared that with you last week. And watch this. And giving of thanks. 
He's moving us into this place. You see, the things of God are real, whether you know it or have the revelation of it or not. It didn't just become real just when you found out. And I understand what God has given me about gratitude and grateful. But he said giving of thanks. I actually wanted to see the word grateful. I'm going to look for the word grateful. This gratitude has to do with the giving of thanks. It has to do with being full of praise and 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 that breath that it brings you into. I often talk about the the depth speaking of the love of God. God gives us to move in depths and realms of things. And grateful moves you into a realm. Gratitude is that we actually a realm and we like to call things a spirit the spirit of this and the spirit of that and it's not wrong here again to say the spirit of gratitude but grateful is more than just the nod and the acknowledgement of thanks and I'm gonna go <laughs> you're gonna watch me do what I do it at home blueletterbible.org because I want to bring up, whoops, and now it's still talking. I mean, still following what I said. I want to uh, go to grateful to show you that when God uses the word, he is, he is taking us into a realm. That realm causes life. And the go grateful things that I have. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So that when you get bad news you go grateful in God and you think before God grateful you think before God of the things of him for me I think on his goodness for you you might think on his faithfulness for me I think of how wonderful he is for me I think of the miracles that he does there we go and we were noticing that grateful in the word is spelt different and I'm trying to get to it so what I want you to know is grateful is a place of life it's a realm of life and I'm not just talking about the way we think life in general you know the heart's beating uh, you're able you are able to breathe. It has to do with the breath of life. Most of us don't even know. We haven't studied out what the breath of life has to do with. We have a sense of it because God gave man to know things. He made us in his image and we have to know about these things. So we know uh, resuscitation. We know those kinds of things with breath. We know that... Uh, well, I'll, I'll interrupt myself to say that I used to pass out a lot uh, with something that was wrong and they take my pulse and my heart beats funny so uh, they think oh she's dead and they put this oxygen mask on me now oxygen is a drug uh, I mean uh, <laughs> what we breathe is air we don't breathe straight oxygen however when they think you're dying or uh, trying to resuscitate you they put an oxygen and and after they got me to where and always I come out <laughs> you know that it's too much it's too much and I learned remember I told you about that thing I learned about grateful I learned to be thankful to be grateful because at first I used to be upset that you know you, you don't realize it that when people are trying to bring you back back to life when they think you're gone they beat you they pound you and <laughs> I learned this in, in praying for people to be healed, that I want you to be brought to health and not just healed. Because if you come back to life from the place of, of death, you can come back with all the sickness that you had. You're just, you're just resurrected. I want you to come back like Lazarus. <laughs> and I want you not to just be healed, but I want you to have total health. So not only will it not come back, but as when they would bring me back, and I would feel where they pounded on me and it would hurt. And uh, all the different other things that you do that you don't realize. And I learned that they're doing what they've learned to do. 
to minister life. So what I need to do so that I won't be mad that you beat me up. It feels like you, you beat me up. And, and so that the oxygen feels like it's, it's, it's doing its job, but actually filling your lungs and making it. And I'm not a good person that you can make to do anything. And I noticed that my organs are like that. And God taught me that be so full of him and so full of his word that if someone, I taught this to, to my children, they're, they're grown, very grown now, but from little, taught them, be so full of Christ, so full of the Spirit of God, so full of the Word of God, that if somebody startles you waking you up, like that, that stone that hit the window, bam, you know, startles you, you've got to praise. You've got to praise. Because uh, for the way I grew up, I would, uh, people would get startled and come out cussing. In salvation, God taught me, be so full of him that you have praise. And going grateful is to know that thankfulness moves in life. It's not just a mental consent and acknowledgement. It is that. It is that. But it's moving in life. Think of somebody again. Even now when you know it, you can't, you can't help but to breathe. It causes you to... And that's why it's medicine. Because God made us, he made us mostly water and, and air. What God made you is what your body needs. It's what ministers to you. Medicine took some time to get around to finding out that you want to give oxygen to help with the things that go wrong in the body. You want to give liquids to the things that go wrong in the body. God gave that from the beginning, and he made us those. And so when you move into gratitude, it causes you to move into the life that God gave, even if modern medicine isn't up to it. And by the way, ancient medicine had more to do with things. Uh, sorry, ancient medicine had more to do with the things of God. Man knew. Man came here, being Adam, being seen. Uh, one example I like to give is Adam knew how to name all the animals. God, he had the the wisdom of God in him to name all the animals. You see, we can do the job God gave us to do. He equip, equipped us to do it. We want to stay in Him and in His way and in His heart so that we do it the way He would do it. Because most of us are full of doing it our way instead of His way. That's why I use the expression, your way, Yahweh. Yahweh being uh, one of the pronunciations of the names of God. You know, your way, Yahweh. Because going grateful, uh, I use Psalm 107 so much that I almost don't want to, but I'm going to. That God wants us to know that this attitude of gratitude moves you into life. Uh, well, now I was going to Psalm 107 and my, my thing here went to the Second Timothy. He says the prayers, pardon me, the supplications... The prayers, the intercessions, yeah, those are supposed to be with thanksgiving. And then he lets you know, which is surprising to me, but it's his word. For kings and for all that are in authority. Now, when you're just following the word, not even following modern day or ancient day or historical day, kings of the earth are usually a mess. I mean, they understand their power, they understand their authority, and they understand that they're the ones to do it and walk in it, and they use it to do some god-awful things. And they use it to do some good things, too. And I want you to know that good people do some god-awful things, and god-awful people do some good things. That's why you want to move in gratitude, because it moves you into the realm of the dimension of the life of God. Not just life that I need to save a life right now. Yes, you want to move in that. 
you've heard uh, testimonies of people that lifted cars off of people because we as humans, God gave us to give life to one another. But then on the other hand, we'll come up with doctrines that will call somebody false because they understand that they're to move in life and only God gives life. God is the author of life. He's given us to minister life. Come on, he had Luke, Jesus had Luke the physician on his staff to minister life, to minister medicine. Everything is that lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. God reminds, here's where I need to go grateful. I, I, I love walking in health. I love waking up full of energy. I love waking up without pain. Don't like it when I wake up the other way. And then I have to speak the word of God to my body. I'm so thankful and grateful that the word of God is powerful, quick and alive, sharper than any two-edged sword. And it works. And when I tell my body that you have to conform to what God's word said when he made you, very good. Yeah, it conforms. I, I share that with you a lot because I have to do it a lot. And then I can't let myself be discouraged because I have to do it a lot. I need to go grateful. That thing that I tell you, you go look at it in Psalm 107, how many times he tells you to give thanks to God because you know that he is good. You want to keep your attention on that thing so that you're moving in life because the things that he names in that Psalm 107 the things it each one is a set of circumstances I know that we like to pull out the verses that we really like a lot you know he sent his word and healed them we yeah we love that but it's sections of circumstances that in front of each one you need to go grateful that's how you're going to get through that's how you're not going to despair to the point that you want to die when we even look at it that way, I want to die. We're not looking at life. Because when, when we leave here, when we close our eyes, we're to wake up and see Jesus. You accept him right now if you don't know him so that you can. Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus, I accept you as Lord. I accept you as my Savior. Take over. Forgive my sin. And notice he said sin, not just sins. Yes, your sins are con in included when he washes you and cleanses you with his blood. When he baptizes you into the body of Christ by the spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead. And that's the life that grateful moves in. So that when you go grateful, it'll get you through the bad prognosis. Oh yes, it will. It'll get you through the depression that that pulls you down so that you think of dying. How dare we? How dare we? And I've been there. So I'm, I'm not just fussing at you. I'm letting you know. How dare we? Jesus Christ died on the cross and took away the sting of death. And we're talking about we want to die. <laughs> what we want is glory. What we want is home. Every one of you, when you go to the store, you go home after. When you go visit someone, you're going to go home. And it's not because you're, you feel so awful or so bad. If you're out, out and about and things make you feel bad, you can't wait to get home. It's a joyful thing. So when it's a depressive thing, you want to go grateful. You want to move into the realm of life. You want to move in the dimension of life. And then guess what? You breathe. And whether medicine knows it or doesn't know it, whether you're going through chemo or not going through chemo, you breathe. You ever look at the way a newborn baby breathes? Their stomach moves when they breathe because they're breathing through everything that God made breath to go through, every organ when we're talking the physical man. And, and you see a baby's stomach moves. When we're grown, we don't breathe like that anymore, and I don't understand why. And it's not because we shouldn't. That breath like that actually kills cancer cells. Now, medical science knows something about that. And it would be so simple to just every day. And not just for cancer. Oxygen m moves 
life into the organs and organisms and the things that we haven't discovered. We didn't always know cells. We didn't always know neurons. And there's other things that we don't know yet. It's still what God gave. And the oxygen still moves into it. Do we think of it when we say that that uh, life and death is in the tongue? How many times do you think of the things that you say and realize that it's ministering health? It's ministering death? It's ministering life. Say things that minister life. When you get a bad report and you're not grateful, you'll, you'll talk things that minister death. You're not moving in the realm of life. Grateful, gratitude, and I always tell you, thankfulness causes a tsunami, a tsunami of favor. Now that's not just the favor of man, it's the favor of God, but it's favor in the senses that we haven't understood these kinds of things, of bowels of mercy and what it does and how it goes out into the earth and how it comes in into our inner sphere, I call it, because we know about the atmosphere, into our inner sphere. We don't pay attention to uh, a lot to how things make us feel better. Nowadays, science will hook you up. They did this with me. They'll hook you up to different things that measure so that when you say, like my children's names and the body reacts and they found out that the heart works better your breathing works better and they didn't know to look at it before but your liver <laughs> will work in a way that in my case wasn't doing what it was supposed to do and now when you think grateful and then uh, with that test they did some other things you know but to think on other things and you can bring yourself to health through what you say. Life and death is then the power of your tongue. Often in the course I teach on it, I show you that in all language, there's consonants and there's vowels. And tongue, teeth, tongue, mouth, lips. When you look in the scripture, and you find out what they have to do with life and what they have to do with purpose. And you get to see that those are the things that have to do with purpose, your purpose. So go grateful with what you say because you're enacting purpose. Now make sure you're saying words so that you're enacting God's purpose and not enacting ill purpose because God will override you. However, if you're moving in things that he's anointed you to move in, that he's or, or moved you into his glory. We're going to talk about that, the difference between anointing and glory. If he has caused you to be a person to move into a certain thing, in other words, you have authority in the earth, in this thing, and also in the heavenlies, by the way. When he's given you authority and you say, you're saying in the authority, in the level levels humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due time there are levels yes God ordained levels he's the one that says come up higher mm -hmm. set your affections on things above or the other example that I'm always giving about the the uh, people of excellence the 30 the army of excellence and the 30 that was above and the threes that the others had not attained to. Now, if you're of a certain thought, you think, oh, well, she's making or they're making themselves to be something. And God tells you not to do that. Yes, he does. It doesn't mean that he doesn't make different ones of us that. If he made you the 30, you're more excellent than the army. And he might, you want to know then position, he might position you to minister to the army. Or he might position you to learn from the threes. And you're still going to know, I have that kind of excellence. And you might know that 
I don't measure up to this, and you're going to want to. Or when you're busy ministering to, and you don't get to see. All right, right now I can see my image. You normally don't see the nose on your face. I think God does that, my opinion. I think God does that on purpose. So that when you are glorious and when you're moving and all the wonderful, you're not stuck on you. <laughs> I, I have a friend, I haven't seen him in years, but an insurance person. And every year uh, they would get turkeys uh, for Thanksgiving, live turkeys. And he would keep his car done because he's an insurance person. He has to look good when he goes places. And the tur every single year, the turkey would see the reflection and attack, attack, and ruin his car that it had to be fixed every year. Some of us human beings are like the turkeys. We see our reflection and don't realize it's us and we want to attack. Some of us are like, there's another bird that... He wants to make friends. Actually, it's not a bird. It's a, a mammal. And he wants to make friends. A lot of times cats are like that. We as people, we as human beings, we need to recognize how we are and who we are. When you find the ways that you are, that are the ways God made you, not ways that you learned to be, the ways that God made you, I was listening earlier to, to uh, a little boy who's loud, loud. And, and at first I thought, well, okay, the mics were up. No, no, no. When the other children taught, I mean, pardon me, weren't speaking, they're talking so soft, and someone was pointing that out. And I thought, wow, wow. Some people speak with a loud voice, now, because I'm a, a singer and a writer, and uh, I, I call it amps, that some people just have natural amps. Well, that could be because they're to be an orator. Think of Jesus talking to 3,000 and 5,000 people, and they heard him. Now, because I, I do that uh, in a whole different way, and, and I was astonished to see crowds that I, bigger than what I knew how to number, and there wasn't the technology there. And I found that there were a few thousand or maybe a few hundred. I'm not good at numbering crowds of people. And every so many depths of hundreds or thousands, there was someone saying so that the message was getting across to everybody. We don't know if they were doing it that way because we know that they didn't have our equipment. You don't know how Jesus was speaking to crowds that big. Now we can know, we can know, but because unfortunately, modern man, we always think that that nothing, that we have the greatest and the best, and we know we know more than what was ever known before. That is really not true, and you learn that in the Word of God when you stay with the Word of God, <clears throat> and you let the Word of God be what teaches you and what shows you, so that when you go grateful. Gratitude will show you things <coughs> that you didn't know. When you're thankful, wisdom will talk to you. And wisdom said that I was here uh, before the earth was inhabited. If you want to be stuck on knowledge, and knowledge is a good thing, but if you want to be stuck on what you know, and all you know is there's no new thing under the sun, you've closed yourself off to wisdom showing you things that were here before you were. And for the time, like Esther, for such a time as this, for the time, or like Moses, for fulfilling the prophecy that God gave, for the time, gratitude will move you right into knowing what to do. And you don't want to second guess yourself. When you move in gratitude, you don't. You'll think about it later. And then you'll notice things like, <clears throat> God said, I give the example often, God said, when you're worshiping here, he said to Moses, when you're worshiping here on this mountain, you're going to know that I told you. Most of us want to do like Gideon and don't realize that that's not God's way. A wicked and adulterous generation, Jesus told us, seek a sign. That's who wants a sign. Huh, are you looking for a sign? 
Are you looking for a sign? Are you, are you looking for a sign? You don't count yourself a wicked and adulterous generation, do you? When you're, well, I'm going to ask God to do it this way so that I can know for sure. God wants you to be full of the knowledge of his will. And when you go grateful, you breathe life. And life is what ministers to you. Grateful in the word of God and in man has to do with moving in the dimension of God life. Not just life, God's life. God life. Man's been doing experiments more longer than my lifetime. I used to hear about them when I was a teenager and listen to things that had gone on in the previous generations of experiments to create life. And man has been able to put some things together that looks like life, but then they don't stay alive. By now, we've learned some things and learned how to keep them so that it looks like life. It's time for us to know how to go grateful so that the life is the life of God. Rather, it's the life of <laughs> inanimate things. Because remember, Jesus told us to speak to the mountain. In Matthew, he talks about speaking to the mountain. In, in uh, Luke, he talks about saying to the sycamine tree. Will we notice that you can speak to something that doesn't have life, and you can say to something that has life, and you can cause movement and movement of position without a bulldozer? You're the bulldozer. Gratitude is the bulldozer. You don't have to wait till you know how, even with a bulldozer, do you know how to drive one? I don't know how to operate one, and I know how to drive. I've been driving since I was 16 years old. I know how to drive, but I don't know how to operate a bulldozer. But I know how to operate in the Word of God, and I know how to go to gratitude so that when it's something that I haven't learned yet, when it's something that we haven't dealt with yet, when it's something that even if he told you ahead of time, you still wouldn't get it. Gratitude causes you to move in life. Life in realms, depths, and dimensions that you didn't know. I'm going to relate it to, and I hope you can connect the dots. But Jesus is the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. The things that God ordained, he told you he ordained in him. So the things that you don't know about, they're there for you to know and move in. And gratitude will take you and put you in the exact position. You ever drive to a place and now you're, you're there? You know, if you're using modern day GPS, it tells you that you're there. You're there, but now you gotta find it. You gotta find it. Gratitude, going grateful, it'll move you through everything that you need to arrive. And, and as you arrive, it'll put you right in the spot and now you'll also have the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding, the discretion, the discernment, everything you need to move. Everything you need to move or to do. Maybe it's not a movement. Maybe it's a knowing. Maybe it's a saying. I, I, God is the one who pointed it out. God the Father is the one who pointed it out to me when the pandemic started. How that we're so used to and most of us know best the Matthew scripture of speak to the mountain. And he showed me that in Luke, it's, it's say to the sycamine tree, something that's living, something that affects life and living. Not just it affects movement or what you have to do or position. And we need to understand that that it is life doesn't mean that it doesn't have position. Because he said to tell that sycamine tree to be plucked up and be planted in the sea. The mountain, he said, cast into the sea. God doesn't know what he's talking about. Yes, he does. We're the ones who doesn't know what he's talking about. And we're the ones who mix it up. And there are situations and times where we don't need to mix it up. What I love about God's word, though, you say God's word. And he'll do it according to his word. So, 
and, and I still didn't find all those those uh, pictures that I wanted to go into on going grateful. And and I have, like I said, it's a, a ten week course on going grateful, and I usually end up giving it to people that get bad news, bad news, so that you know that Colossians 3.17, and whatsoever you do, whatever it is you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord, and pardon me, the Lord Jesus, giving thanks unto God and the Father by him. Keep your eyes off the circumstance. It doesn't mean you're ignorant of it. It doesn't mean you don't know what's going on. It means that you stay in gratitude. You stay in the realm that, ah, oh, not the tsunami that rains. It rains. Other things look like it's taken over. No, it isn't. When you move into gratitude, life takes over. And it might, it might happen in ways that you didn't mean. It might happen in ways that if, you, if you're left to you, you think something needs to be moved out of here. I was thinking this morning how that when I first uh, started prison ministry, and back then there was uh, nobody went into the prisons, kind of like it should be now. And the, the guards, they didn't like it when people had to come and bring their groups because they, they complained that it, it made them have to do more work and and the people were up I call it upsided, upset and excited, uh, when they left and they had to it just made more work for them and they didn't like it. And I was back this is back when God was had had taught me go grateful and he was now giving me the demonstration of taking the time to move into gratitude rather than have an attitude about what's wrong and what needs to be changed. Yeah, what needed to be changed needed to be changed. He had me go into going grateful about it. And I, I didn't get to know the details of this until years later. But uh, one government official wanted to stick it to another government official as far as the prisons and what was happening and gave us carte blanche basically for the prisons. Now it wasn't because they even cared about the things of God or didn't care. It wasn't a caring or not caring. He just knew that it was going to keep him busy and out of his hair and also let him know who, who is authority. And God had taught me go grateful. And I was in a situation where I really wanted to obey because everywhere I looked, the things were distressing. The things that were going on in the leadership, in the body of Christ, the things that were going on with the leadership in government, the things that were going on with <clears throat> leadership, even in, in places like um, we would go hold Bible studies in, in apartment complexes. And the things that were just even leadership in, in those smaller circumstances and everything that people were upsided, <laughs> upset and excited in a negative kind of way. And so God teaching me to go grateful, I was very happy to do it because everywhere I looked, things were awful. And I knew that if I concentrate on that, I'll be awful too because I could feel my attitude, you know. And like Daniel, you don't see Daniel getting ugly with the ugly kings that he served under. And you see him elevated and kept close to the kings. And I know for Christians who want to say that Christians don't belong in politics, you need to read your Bible differently. You need to read your Bible a little better. Because God used Mordecai, Esther 10.3, was next unto kings. He went down in history. The, their history recorded to him. Read it, Esther 10.3. Some of you are like Mordecai. And it was for the peace and prosperity of the brethren. Okay? And back to the prison thing. While the, the governor wasn't doing it because he thought 
my proposal. I mean, I wrote out a wonderful, I thought, wonderful proposal. And I showed all of why and the, the good that it would work. He didn't do it for that. He did it for his reasons and made the approval. And had I known at the time, I might have backed out. Had I known it was because he was thought he was making trouble for somebody or keeping them busy. Let me make the testimony good for, on the other person. You want to realize that Daniel, 80 years of life, and he always had an attitude of gratitude. He always moved in thankfulness, and it was always moving. There was ugly, ugly prejudice against the Hebrews during his whole time. And each of the kings that came to reign, and the people, same way with Moses, remember? When, when um, <laughs> Joseph went to bring his father, I'm, I'm talking about Egypt, when Joseph went to bring his, his father to Egypt, they said that they're an abomination to them. That today we use the word prejudice, systemic prejudice. Huh? Man's been that way. Man has been that way. That is not new. How to deal with it is also not new. It'll be new to us if we go to do it. You want to move from gratitude. You want to pray for all men kings and those in authority and you don't just say pray say what the word says so that we do it supplications prayers intercessions and with thanksgiving and remember it's not about them because the very next verse he lets you know so that we have a quiet He's talking about tranquil, peaceable life. You see that grateful makes you breathe the breath of life. And that life is breathed into the atmosphere and the inner sphere. It causes you to say things that minister life. It causes you to know how to have an attitude of gratitude. It causes you to know Remember to go look at that Iron Home song. And I, I had uh, made a comment on one of them, how that these are things that God said to me about my son eight years before he was conceived. See, nowadays I say my son, and I heard someone thinking I was bragging on my son. When God told this to me, I wasn't married, wasn't thinking about married, and I was actually praying and talking to God how that I'm going to live like a nun and never be married so that I can serve you totally. And God speaks to me about a son. And one of the things that he'd said, that he'd given him the sounds of heaven like David of Judah. Now, I was in the Old Testament. I was, uh, somebody gave me a Bible. You read a book from the beginning. <clears throat> and, um, and I understood I knew about David of Judah. And I understood in reading the scriptures that he taught the priests and, and he was a singer when nobody was looking and nobody was listening. And it caused that gratitude. It caused him to not go in the despair of why he was sent out to care for the sheep. The family was basically trying to get rid of him. Remember when, when Samuel came to town? The son, he's a son, and he wasn't even called to the table. I mean, it's one thing not to be invited to uh, something that a group of people that, that you think love you, or at least you know that they know you, and not to be invited. But not to be invited to your own family's table? He wasn't invited. But he didn't live. He didn't live in the despair of things. He didn't live in the, the disdain. He didn't live in the understanding and the reality that people don't want you around. He lived in gratitude. He lived in thankfulness. And it caused favor when people didn't want him to have favor. It caused favor 
when people thought they wanted to be against him. It causes favor in realms and depths and dimensions and people. It causes favor before God and man. Grateful. You always want to move in grateful. For one person, grateful will let you know that you don't want to take that medicine. That medicine will do you harm. And another person, same medicine, grateful will make you make it so that that medicine, it can't do the harm that it does do. It cannot do that in you. Grateful will make it so that you don't make it have to be my way just because that's what God did with me. It's going to be Yahweh because that's his word, God of covenant. Some of you like to say Jehovah. I have a whole course on that, why it's not Jehovah. But you know what? The same way that English wasn't written when God gave all this about grateful. English is the word we use now. English is the word that I use to make you notice that it's spelt one way in King James and spelt another way in your dictionary, and yet you can find both. God will perform his word. And his word was before English. What God said is so. What God wrote and gave to be written, it is so. I, I love, I make this expression, say what God said so that you have what God said. Do what God said so that you can have it done as God said. And you don't know, you don't know. If you forget to go grateful, here's how not to forget. Write it down. Take, take notice of the things that make you, that you're thankful for, that, you, that just you're grateful for. And write them down and put the list somewhere. And I don't mean just somewhere, I'm talking about specific places. So that it's, <clears throat> pardon me, handy when someone makes you upset. When it's handy when something makes you upset. If you're somebody who likes to watch the news, put it up on your TV or whatever it is that you watch the news on so that you know to go grateful. For me, the news takes me into intercession. <laughs> That's happened for decades now. You want to know in everything. You see, the one scripture says, whatever you do, do all in the name of the Lord, giving thanks unto the Father. Another scripture tells us for everything. This one in Thessalonians 5.18, in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you. And that's the thing that he says over in Timothy. Do I still have it up over here? About when you're praying, uh, pardon, I keep saying praying because that's a habit now. 50 years, a habit. Uh, but when you're do, giving supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving up thanks, and he tells you who for? The kings, the ones who can be so evil, and, and the ones who are government and make all things, and all that are in authority. And he tells you so that you can lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness. He also tells you, for this is good. Gratitude takes you to what's good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Always, always go grateful.